In 2017, Yu Darvish was traded to the LA Dodgers. He was thought of as one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. This was a big move for a team that were serious contenders that year. This was Yu Darvish's fourth year of playing in MLB, and this was no doubt about it, the biggest moment of his entire career. The LA Dodgers made it all the way into the World Series, and Yu Darvish had never pitched in anything like the World Series literally ever. Yeah, he may have had postseason experience, but the World Series is unlike anything that he had ever gone through in his entire career. But the Dodgers were depending on Yu Darvish, and in Game 3 of the World Series, he choked. It was Yu Darvish's opportunity, right in front of his eyes, in the span of not even two innings, he gave up four runs, and LA went on to lose that game. Safe to say, fans were not happy, but in Game 7, fans needed to give him another chance whether they liked it or not, because he was going to be the one pitching in that game. This was the game of his life. Dodgers fans needed him to be good. Yu Darvish needed to be good for the sake of himself, but this start was literally no different than the last one. He couldn't make it through the first two innings, and he gave up four runs once again. A failure on who was supposed to be a superstar, and he couldn't pitch well in the World Series. In modern day MLB, we are totally used to the LA Dodgers paying literally everyone. Well, Yu Darvish had an expiring contract in that offseason, season, and he chose to not re-sign with LA for obvious reasons, obviously. Why would he want to play in front of fans who strongly disliked him after his World Series performance? He didn't, and that's exactly why he left. And after he left, he went down to Chicago and he played with the Cubs. He played there for three years before being traded to the Padres in 2021. This was the beginning of a new era in Yu Darvish's career. GM AJ Preller is the one who of course made this move trading for him. He's the longtime GM of the San Diego Padres, and he's been there since 2014. This is a man who needed to build and buy a winning roster, and Darvish was a key part in all of this. The Padres play in San Diego, and it's one of the biggest markets in all of baseball. Because of that, they're able to spend a large amount of money. A big market should be able to deliver, and they should be able to land big free agents. And in 2023, specifically in February, Darvish was extended with the Padres. Now, the big thing to remember is that Yu Darvish is from Japan. That's, of course, where he started his career, and then he made his way to MLB back in 2012. He was able to make relationships with certain Japanese players back then and now, and he really, really wanted to play with a select few. So Yu Darvish went and asked AJ Preller a question, and that question was, will my contract extension affect the Padres in the future when it comes to landing a player like Otani or Yamamoto? If I sign this extension, would we not be able to get them? Preller apparently told him that it was okay, and that his contract would not matter when it comes to signing Otani and Yamamoto. I think it's fair to say that Darvish had true expectations from his team in this offseason. Especially considering this quote by Darvish, he very clearly thought that there were going to be making a move. He said, I'm sad that the Padres didn't take any action to acquire these two players and that they went to the Dodgers. Okay, so this is clear that he had expectations. I mean, that alone proves that. He thought that they would likely make a move on them, and instead, they had zero combined meetings with Otani and Yamamoto. Now, yeah, I understand how expensive that those two players were. I get it. It was not going to be an easy task, and the odds of them actually signing either of them, yeah, that was really going to be rare, but they didn't even try. This is a team that not only has the third best attendance in all of baseball, but they also get top merchandise money for several of their players, and especially, of course, Fernando Tatis Jr. This is a team that for sure had the money, but they just didn't try. They said, okay, too much money for us. We won't even have a damn meeting with either of them. And result of that, the division rival LA Dodgers, who have won the division 10 times out of the last 11 years, only just got better. They they got the best pitcher, they got the best hitter in free agency. San Diego's putting up absolutely no fight, and it is pathetic. Especially when you take into consideration how this offseason has gone for the Padres. They traded away their best player, Juan Soto, to the New York Yankees. Now, yes, they got starting pitching. That's great. I, in fact, like that they got pitching. But are we going to forget that Blake Snell is a free agent and most likely will not be coming back? He won the damn Cy Young last year to replace that type of production. 
all they would have had to do is sign Yamamoto. Not only would it have shown Darvish that the Padres are serious about winning, but it also would have shown the fans. People don't know how to feel about this team right now, and they seem really unserious at this point. But they have made one really good move that I am a fan of, and that you Darvish is happy about. The signing of Yuki Matsui. Matsui is a star closer coming from Japan. Great player overall, and you know, Darvish said he'll work hard with Matsui. But there is one big thing that we have to ask ourselves. Is Matsui going to be better than 128 ERA Josh Hader? No, absolutely not. And of course, Josh Hader's a free agent. So let's see. You downgraded at closer. You, of course, are losing Blake Snell. And you traded Juan Soto. Yamamoto would have helped on a level that I literally can't even describe. And Blake Snell wasn't even the only one that they lost. Keep in mind that they also lost Seth Lugo. Lugo had a 357 ERA with the team last year. And it was a really good year. So yeah, of course they got Michael King back in the Soto trade, but did the team get better whenever you account all of the losses? I think the answer is a clear no, they did not get better especially whenever the division is only getting tougher. The Dodgers are currently the best thing since sliced bread. The Diamondbacks are coming off of a World Series loss and are only getting better. The Giants are currently in on several free agents and of course signed Jung-Hoo Lee. Meanwhile, you have the Padres. They simply just don't fit in with the rest of their entire division. Well, I guess the Rockies. I mean, to be fair, they have a friend, the Rockies. In all seriousness, this is a mess. Yu Darvish also went on and said, I'm going to cry and pitch if even Roki Sasaki goes to the Dodgers. Now, Sasaki is a 22-year-old from Japan. He's going to be great. Why wouldn't he want to go to the Dodgers? I believe that Yu Darvish's heart will be broke even more. Imagine a rotation of Yamamoto, Sasaki, Otani, Glasnow, and really anyone could be the fifth man, from Dustin May to Bobby Miller to Gavin Stone. Yu Darvish is seeing his former team land every single pitcher that he's ever dreamed of playing with, and that has got to hurt. No matter how you look at it, it sucks. Yu Darvish also said, let's all become Padres fans, beat LA. So it's nice to see him at least, you know, just trying to take the, I guess, more so motivational approach to all this. It sucks that this has happened to him. It sucks that the Padres are in the situation that they're in. But there's really only one man to blame. That is, of course, AJ Preller. AJ Preller is the one who has built this team. I mean, every single person in this organization nearly has all came from Preller. He has been the one who has dictated what that MOB system is looking like. And it has been losing. It has been disappointment and it needs to change soon. There's a lot of things that are currently hurting this team right now, but I think that there's one thing in particular. Last month, the Padres lost their owner, Peter Seidler. Absolutely awful stuff. He passed away at 63 years old, and safe to say, he was a great owner. Not only was he great for the team, but he did a lot of great stuff off the field. This is a man who in reality is the reason why they spent so much money. He was willing to do anything just for the Padres to go and win. Not having him around anymore will forever hurt. But this is about all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, and peace out.